It's like the snare is probably my favorite thing. It's like you can have any recording, and if the snare sounds bad, it just ruins everything for everyone. But if the snare sounds good and everything else sounds bad, you're like, yeah, it's still a good recording. Yeah. I so, agree. Snare drum. Okay, I'm just going to get this out of the way here um, while we start. Is Steal these settings. This is my gate. I've used this gate forever since I like started, I don't know, maybe a year after I started, but write these down because yeah. this is the most amazing gate of all time. Yeah, right. Back this, to Mick DSP, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah, this is... Uh, that one's not too <laughs> ugly, is it? No, it's not too ugly. I'm just saying, write it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is... It's a huge part well, of yeah, sound. Well, yeah, screenshot it. Yeah. Shift-Command-3. So, just to, to show you real quick before we get into it, this is without the gate. This is with. It's very manageable, more so than others. Um, okay, snare. So my snare always starts with this thing. And I'm always ripping on it, man. You can never get it to not clip. It clips all the time. So true. Yeah. <laughs> that little hit didn't clip it, but yeah, it's it's always clipping. I feel like that's the Don't even ask me in. about it. Just know that it's okay. Um, so we start here, adding a little bit of attack. Um, this essentially just makes your drummer hit harder. Um, when we did the thing at Blackbird, when it was all analog on a console for Jason's live broadcast, I was like, man, I wish I had a transient designer. And the guy was like, oh wait, we do. And he just patched it in. It was like. There you go. I was like, all right. <laughs> um, so yeah, a little bit of sustain. That doesn't, it's not really doing too much, but it's mainly just adding attack, snap on the top snare. Um, got this guy here, a little bit of 200, a little bit of 1.5K. Well, that's a lot on this one. Normally I'm like right halfway. See, the thing is, you can't look at this and say that that's 8 dB, because it's probably not. A lot of times when you shoot these things out against like the originals or something the range of them is totally different and this is probably modeled after you know uh jack joseph puig's model which you don't know if that thing's messed up or if it's working great or if it's exact so um don't look at this and be like oh it's exactly 8 db or 7 dbs this is just a purely a feel and if you guys want i'll play it real quick and just move it around so you can hear yes, please. You wouldn't think that was close to 8 dB. Yeah, it didn't sound like 8 dB. But, yeah, exactly. It's really subtle. Um, this plug-in, I actually like the way it sounds when you clip this one, too. I don't know why. I just do. And you don't have to turn this switch off, which you do have to do on other plugins. Um, I just leave it on. Whatever. So after that, we have the, uh, the gate and... It's just a preset of something that just worked so well. The only thing I ever really change on this gate is the threshold. And that's this right here that kind of lets more or less through. But this is pretty much just set it and I'll never look at it again. Always this thing. I'm always using this to kind of do my main moves. And sometimes it's weird. It's like when I started I would boost around 3K area. But lately I've either just left it flat or sometimes I'll scoop if I want kind of that wet, lush snare that kind of hits you in the chest but you don't feel it crack so much. I think for Jason's record, we wanted it to crack a little more because it just fits the, the genre of music so much better. But something like Get Scared or I See Stars or uh, other stuff that I've done in the past, I'll actually scoop some of that 3K and play around with that. I mean, it's fun to see how that kind of works. 
And my philosophy with snare is that the top one is kind of that thud. That's where you're getting all your bass and power. And the bottom one is kind of that sizzle and snap. So you don't have to have a ton of top end on the snare top, in my opinion. Can you show us, like, demonstrate? Oh, Maybe yeah, yeah. by turning that down some? Sure. And... So first thing I got going on is I'm boosting so, some uh, low end or maybe even low mid at that point. Uh, usually it'll be around 200, but I'll, I'll kind of just go between 100 and 200 and find what works best for the snare. Um, so this is without the EQ. Mine, I'm also attenuating with the EQ, so you'll hear that kind of kick in as well. Kind of makes it fat, wetter, more lush. Now, I'll show you what happens when I scoop this band here. That's nice. It's offensive. You put the bottom with it. Kind of rounds it out a little bit. We don't have that on here, but I encourage you to try that out because it's fun. And then sometimes I'll boost a little 1K on here if I feel like it needs it. So that's kind of like my main EQ that's going on. And then here, let's see if I'm actually doing anything. Yeah, okay, so there was just a weird little ring that uh, came through that I kind of just went on here and just kind of swept around and just felt where it was like, you know, here, without. With. Could you show us the like? Could you isolate the ring for us? Yeah, yeah. So, two ways to do it. One, you could just have it down here and sweep around, and that's cool. But I also like to just boost it. Attenuate from there. You gotta make sure you're not losing too much. I mean, I think the frequency this is happening at is close to 300 hertz, which isn't really too much of that low impact, so it's okay, but if it's down even lower, then you have to get tighter and, and be a little more careful. I also noticed the Fab filter has a really cool feature where you can just solo the band and sweep through, and you can even set the cue <coughs> or the, the bandwidth of it to be like a square which is pretty insane. Um, you guys will see that more later, but just for this, I, I, I don't know, I was just vibing this EQ. Have you even <clears throat> gotten into samples yet on the snare? This is all natural so far. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, I love this plugin. I don't know why, I just love it. it. It does more of what I already have on the way in, but it, it's the closest one. I've tried all of them. This sounds pretty darn close. It's not the exact same thing, but it's close and I don't know if you use these Joey like like the emulations of stuff but I think if you track things pretty clean there's a lot of plugins that you can like rough up the audio with that'll kind of get you in the ballpark of what these boxes are doing um so here it's funny because I didn't even know I did this I'm just I'm kind of learning this as it's happening it's just something that because when I mix I go really fast and I tend to just do it when it feels right, I'll immediately shut it and just move on to the next thing. It's all about like going off of your gut feeling. And so after seeing this, you know, the only thing I could say about it was just a tiny little bit of lows, a little bit of upper mids and a little bit of air is what it, I felt it was lacking. I put this on. Um, and then again, we have this virtual channel, which on the snare, I like this 4K G, which is an SSL G series console. And we're just getting a little drive from that. And like I said, like with the kick, we did the Neve um, emulation. And so for the snare, I like the SSL. Because to me, it's more about the mid on the SSL one. It's like the Neve kind of gives you this low end crazy thing. But I have so much of that happening beforehand to where it's like, I like the way the, S the SSL 4K kind of fits in the mix. So this kind of just adding that console emulation at the end of the chain. And then a really big part is this send right here, going to my reverbs. So let's see here. Do you think that you could uh, construct that and show it piece by piece? 
Which on one? That, on the snare that you just the uh, should the slate this thing? plugins. Yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. So you mean like bypass? Yeah. Them? Okay. I'm using. I'm probably using the line or the input to to make up a lot. So. Thwacky. Mm -hmm. So so pretty much what's happening is you're getting a huge peak, but not a lot of everything else. And when you put these two in, it's doing that distortion thing where it's kind of not letting the peak go anywhere, but it's bringing more of the other stuff. So you pop them back in and my volume from this, I'm, I'm bringing the input in pretty hard and, and the drive is all the way up on this one. That's interesting. So you thought that the uh, original snare was all transient and not enough body. And that's, see, the thing is, this, this whole chain is something that I've set up. Like, this would have al already been there or something similar. I really like the Waves NLS as well, and, and there will probably be some of that on this mix. Maybe, maybe not, but that's what I used to use. And so what will happen is I'll just quickly kind of get these things on here. And then if this is here, then I'll go back and tweak things that are mm -hmm. going into so it. This is all just like initial kind of where you start kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like they're all related to each other. Every mm -hmm. single thing that's happening, if you take one piece out, it's not the same thing. It's just, it's, I don't know, it's annoying. It's a lot of plugins. And that's why I really like what Joey's doing is because he's finding a way to put all these controls and, and all these tones into one little plugin where you don't have to fuss around with all this stuff you can just have it right there and be ready so i'm stoked to start trying some of that stuff out and just have one plugin on the track as opposed <laughs> to a million but yeah i mean it's just all one big signal chain nice and then uh so we got the snare verb here this is bus going to bus three and four and we got two buses here, so let's see what, what's going on. So, this is probably not going to let me... Oh, no. Okay, so here's my main snare reverb. You actually... This is so important to my sound that I include it with my drum samples. Um, because it's really making, like... It's making this... When I gate the snare the way that I do, and it's kind of a lot of crack like that, this is kind of rebuilding that body and sustain and so these are the settings it's revived it's kind of a tight just up close boomy kind of room sound so without it kind of thin put it in adds everything and that goes on the bottom snare as well So that's my main snare verb. Um, and then I have something else that I was messing around with, which is we were really getting into this AMS clone at the time. And this thing is amazing. I love this so much that I want to buy a real one. They're like four grand or something. This, this guy's not going to stop bugging me till I own all the same gear as Blackbird. It's really cool, too. Yeah, it's it's really cool, <laughs> and it's kind of like the hardware units where like everything sounds different, but I think the sound of this is in the conversion, because they have 80s converters, and it like gives it this cheesy, kind of grainy sound that maybe wasn't cool back then, but is really cool now. So this is another snare verb. Um, let me turn it up so I can hear what I'm actually doing with it. It's just... Really trebly, kind of just. <laughs> and just got a little bit of high EQ and a little bit of low, filter out some of the mud. This is just like an effect. I mean, this isn't like, you don't really hear this too much in the mix. It's just nice to add a little bit of sizzle to everything else. Like, where, how loud is it in the mix? Barely in there. It's just an extension off of this one, I think. 
It could have been something that I was just messing around with, never mm-hmm. turned off, and it just worked, so I left it, you know? Um, so that's, that's my main drum reverb, and then I also use uh, tom reverb, which we'll get into when we get to the toms. But So that's the snare top, and then snare bottom, most of you know I use tons of it. Most people don't. A lot of the people I learn from don't even mic the bottom of the snare. I love it. I love turning it up really loud. I want it to sound like the snare is falling on your face every time it gets hit. <laughs> um, so let's see what we got on here. Transient designer again, kind of doing similar stuff, maybe more sustained with the bottom snare. Um, these settings are slightly different for the bottom, but you can use the top settings if you wrote those down. If you guys want to write these down, feel free. You got about 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that was more like seven all right this weird kind of thing happening with this oxford plug-in it's just kind of like that's quite high yeah not much 200 i'm just trying to recreate some kind of solar system looking <laughs> quantum physics thing i was this is actually more of a design rather than an audio thing no i this is just it came in on an old session template and i i just like the way it sounds so i've used it since um, so it just is what it is just is what it is i mean you're just filtering out most of the lows a little bit of a boost in that kind of low mid area so it still kind of punches through getting rid of some of the nasty stuff and then having some air at that top um let's see without mm-hmm. pretty pretty drastic what I found with this it's it's so weird but when you EQ the snare the bottom snare that hard phase doesn't even really matter anymore at that point you'll flip it and you won't even hear a difference so I think that's kind of cool and it's kind of foolproof for people that don't like to obsess over phase it's like if you have this EQ on there's not too much low happening so you're not going to really feel the difference um it's funny this plugin is like the shottest plugin ever but i can't get my bottom snares without it i've used it forever that's the bomb factory, that's the bomb factory yeah. <laughs> do you remember that it's so great for bottom snare that's it i don't use it on anything else just the bottom snare but really hitting it Bypass. With it. See, the thing that I can't do for you guys is when I audition stuff, instead of dialing it to be exact gain structure or whatever, I'll just turn it down and then turn it back up. Um, but you guys have the actual audio coming out of it, so you can't hear it, but yeah. Is it normally your strategy that the top snare is more of the the size and the thump, and then your bottom snare is more the crack and the attack? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Um, this plugin is this is my favorite, man. It's like a EMI kind of Abbey Road console emulation, and I love it on kick i love it on bottom snare and i love it on toms because it actually adds low and highs the more you drive it and so i'm just gonna start at zero and bring the drive in for you guys to hear when you bring it in it gets brighter mm -hmm. it's like the circuit in it is like I don't know what it's doing, but it literally makes it brighter. As well as louder and more distorted. Exactly what I want for toms, too. Sometimes I'll just put that on toms and I don't even have to EQ them. They're wondering if you could uh, bypass all the plugins on the bottom snare and bring them in one by one so they can hear what each plugin does individually. Sure. 
I pass the gate because that's <laughs> there's automation on that that like doesn't here. There we go. What that did. Adding a little more crack on the top, a little more sustain. Bring the gate in. Amazing. Um, this is just kind of drastic EQ that's going on. Just something that my ears are used to that I've just always used. Um, this is going to be a lot of makeup gain. Something about this that's just like so splatty and weird that doesn't really sound good on anything but the bottom snare. And I've ne I, sometimes I'll try the CLA 76, which I love a lot more than this, but this on the bottom snare just works. I don't know why. So here's with the NLS. Times with this, I'll just go drive all the way up. Just for his mix, it just felt right there. Um, not sure why there's no reverb, but usually I send this, the bottom snare to the verb. A little bit less than the top. Everything. And a lot of the times I'll play the kick and snare by themselves. Kind of see where they're hitting on the compressor, make sure they both feel cohesive and just sound right. What are you looking for with in terms of where they're hitting on the compressor? Um, do you, you think know, we could get the uh, the candy ham? <laughs> <laughs> the handy cam, that is. Uh -uh. Oh, dude, candy ham, stick, stick commit. <laughs> All right, the but, candy, the candy ham. There you go. <laughs> I just want them to see on the uh, oh, sure. on the meters, yeah, yeah, what you're so, looking for. Usually, <clears throat> I'll start here. And this can back off at any point. Hold on, I'm gonna set you guys down. Oops. Wait, you you pointed at the analog stuff though, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. Oh, okay, okay, so, sorry. So, Chill, I'll bro. start here. <laughs> kind of hitting there and that, this is gonna drive into this right here. So right now I think We're not getting much. Um, normally, I'll start. Somewhere around there, where it's just like one to two dB. For Jason's stuff, I think we wanted to do a little less on the pumpy bus compressor because it's it's busy music. So we want to be hitting a little bit less and we also want to let distortion box do something. I'm going to show you guys uh this is without this. Here's when I put it in. So that distortion is acting like compression as well. So uh, for, for a normal mix for me, be hitting around there to start things off and then we might back it off or we might drive into it even more. And I'll play around with my master fader and kind of push this up or down depending where it is, how it needs to feel, all that jazz. Something out about that distortion box. It's somewhat subtle. I mean, I could totally hear the difference, but it's not crazy sounding. Like and the when more you, you put into it, mm -hmm. the less subtle it becomes because it's getting overloaded harder. Mm -hmm. So on a kick and snare, you'll hear just a little, like it just kind of brings it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, totally. But when you get that whole mix in there, it's like you really feel it when you push it in. It sounds great. Yeah, they're cool. They just had a sale, 1300 yeah. bucks. Go snag one. <laughs> I'm like, go snag one, run your life through it. How about that? <laughs> All right, so, um, and then we have this little trigger thing here. Which is 
this guy. Literally the same hits every time. Sounds terrible when there's like drum rolls. Sounds terrible regardless. So fake and just awful. But um, if you put in, so we got the main ones here. Bring this in. You don't really hear it, no. but it's there. It's a little more sizzle, a little more yeah. depth. Just, just adds a little bit. I, I, you know what? Lots of you guys that um, are anti-samples. This is the way that someone who's not into samples should be using samples. Yeah. Yeah. I'm anti-samples. Yeah, but you're still using but I'm them because samples. <laughs> Sue me. No. <laughs> All right. Um. So this has nothing on it. I mean, it's not even really worth talking about. It's just some corny, like, Alesis 80s drum samples blended together with some other stuff that I don't even know. It's just weird. Um, so that's my snare. And then we do have these ghost notes here that just kind of help. Make up for how hard I'm gating the snare and they blend with the overhead really well. And I'm processing them exactly the same as I processed the snare, maybe changing a few factors to kind of make them sit in. But they're really just kind of an afterthought to just get that clarity out of Luke's drums just so we can hear every little thing. <laughs> 